Good day, everyone. This is Pastor Charlie, and today I'd like to share with you um, some tips, uh, actually three basic steps for salvaging or improving your marriage or relationship. And, of course, this is based on uh, Bible principles. And so uh, I've been meaning to make this video for quite a while, and... Uh, finally carved out some time here so uh, let's just get right into it because I've got a lot of information to share in a short time uh, first thing I'd like to ask you is is your marriage or relationship worth salvaging do you really love the person that you're with and uh, would you like to be with them uh, for the foreseeable future um, if you're relationship is uh, is is failing and you want to bring back those honeymoon feelings you want to bring back that that joy and that the closeness and and all of that back into uh, your relationship um, and are you sick and tired of the bickering nagging jealousy and the rage, the arguments, the conflict that's going on uh, in your relationship and in your family uh, as a result of your relationship. Um, in Proverbs 21.9 it says, It is better for a man to dwell in the corner of a housetop than with a brawling woman in a wide house. And how true that is. Um, you just when you're trying to make a relationship work and a marriage work uh, you just can't go day by day in that same mode making the same mistakes over and over and over again and before I get into the three steps uh, I want to share a couple of things with you first of all I'd like to um, let you know that um, God's Word is our official blueprint for life and not just life but as Jesus stated life more abundant therefore the following three steps are based on the Bible principles that you will find in Ephesians chapter 5 verses 1 through 33 and I would go ahead and read those for you but in the interest of time I'll let you um, go ahead and read that for yourself there is a wealth of information uh, about uh, relationships and uh, especially marriage um, in those verses in Ephesians chapter 5 uh, and this is where I get the the three basic steps that we're going to be talking about and uh, the next thing I want to say is uh, there is a chain of command there is a command structure in the kingdom of God in the kingdom of Jesus Christ and in that chain of command Men are considered the head of household and are held accountable to God for everything that happens in the relationship uh, and everything that happens in the family. And that's why, you know, in my title I said that it, this is a man-sized job. It's because as men we are supposed to be the spiritual and temporal leaders of our family. And um, so everything that's been happening uh, that's been, you know, virtually destroying your relationship, uh, it may not be your fault. You know, it, you, could, you could say it's uh, a lot of times it's not the man's fault, but I want to tell you from a biblical point of view, it's now your problem. Why? Because it's your responsibility. You're supposed to be the one uh, taking the lead, not necessarily taking control or being in charge, but taking the lead to lead your family on a righteous path. <clears throat> now, I also want to say that if you want a lasting relationship, if you want a relationship that, that lasts more than a couple of months or a couple of years and a happy relationship, um, Marriage is going to have to be a part of that. So to summarize, men, it may not be all your fault, but 
in the kingdom of God, it's your responsibility. Next. Okay. I said next. Taking a moment. Okay, there we go. We have to know that relationships are built on two main things. Trust and respect. Men, it takes us a long time to build trust and respect with a woman. And when you blow that trust and respect, it can take an incredibly long time to regain that trust and respect. And of course, this goes both ways. It's for men and women, but uh, today I'm te teaching uh, mainly as the man's responsibility. It is your responsibility to earn your wife's trust and her respect and to keep it throughout the life of the relationship. Okay, now let's go ahead and get into the steps. First step, what we need to do to uh, revive a failing relationship is replace lust with genuine affection and attention. And by affection, I mean showing your woman affection without the expectation of sex. Um, I, I can guarantee you, if um, you are a sexual being, that you will get uh you will have intercourse more often if without expecting your woman to lay down for you every time that you want her to show her love and affection um and and she will uh she will be more willing and more accepting of your advances towards her. Um, you, you know, this thing of just coming home, never listening to her, never paying real close attention to her, not even asking her how her day went, and then expect sex as soon as you lay down in bed. Uh, majority of the time, it's just not happening. And you guys know what I mean, right? Uh, we need to replace that lust that's inside of us, especially as young men. When you're a young man, young man, uh, it can be uh, overpowering. the The desire uh, for intercourse can be overpowering, but you've got to learn to get some control over that. And here's how you do that: you remove lust out of your life by understanding what lust is. Lust comes in three forms according to the Bible. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. So in the lust of the eyes, we all know that men get turned on by what they see. When you see uh, your woman naked, instantly a man is, uh, you know, hot to go. Uh but what we need to do is we need to get lust out of the equation and bring genuine affection and attention in. So if you uh, um, are looking at other women, if you are paying attention to other women, um, if you have pornography in the house or on the computer, uh, that's lust of the eyes. And you really need to get rid of that. You need to remove that as part of your life if you expect uh, to revive your relationship and uh, for your relationship to grow the way that it ought to. Um, the next one is the lust of the flesh and that is of course the lust of the flesh is whatever pleases your senses, your five senses, uh, touch, feel, smell, uh, hearing, um, and we need to do those things in our life which um, are good and also please our senses. Uh, not the things that um, are iffy or bad. Um, the next thing is the pride of life. This is where ego comes in. A lot of men like 
to have feel like they have control over their uh, wife, over their family, over their woman. Uh, you need to, as a as a relationship, and as especially when you're in marriage, uh, it's not uh, marriage is a covenant not a contract and it's designed to last for uh, a lifetime and uh, the difference between a covenant and a contract a contract there are loopholes in and you can get out of a covenant you've made that commitment you're going to keep it for life so uh, you know in a there's a lot of ways that men have ego problems and it's associated with you know what we look like what kind of work we do how strong we are etc etc uh we need to get our ego under control we need to not be controlling uh over our woman and over our family and we not we need to not be greedy and uh you know desire everything for ourselves um we need to share our life and our experience with the people that we love and especially the woman that we love and so we need to replete replace the lust that's within us with genuine affection and attention by removing those three layers of lust that are just kind of built into human nature the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh pride of life. If you think about it, you'll think of a lot more than what I've listed here. Okay, next one. The second step. Start removing obstructions out of your relationship. Start truly cherishing your spouse. Your spouse is, according uh, to the Word of God, half of who you are. The Bible says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother cleave or weave his life in in with his wife and they too shall become one flesh so the, the whole idea is uh, marriage is uh, a reflection of the relationship between Christ and the church it's designed to teach us uh, about spiritual things and if done right uh, it can uh, truly be just the greatest thing that can happen uh, to a man on this earth. Uh, the Bible tells us that for a man to find a wife is truly a blessing from God. Start to cherish your spouse. Think about all the positive things about her instead of dwelling on those little negative things that are nagging at you. Um, if you start to cherish her instead of, uh, let me put it this way. There's an old saying, treat your wife like a thoroughbred and she'll never turn into an old nag. And that is so true. Next, delete destructive social activities. If you have single friends, if you have a uh, family, if you belong to clubs, uh, organizations, etc., that take away from your relationship. In other words, if you're hanging out with your single friends going around and they're going around chasing girls all the time, uh, that's not a place where a man who is devoted to his relationship with his woman ought to be. Uh, if you're really intent on reviving your failing relationship, you're going to have to weed out some friends, maybe some family members. Uh, you know, and you know you can't choose family, but you can choose who you hang out with. Uh, you're going to have to cut out a lot of outside activities that um, uh, that interfere with your relationship with your woman. Next, no more flirting. Stop flirting. You open yourself up to temptation when you flirt 
with a, a member of the opposite sex. And even if you're doing it anonymously on the web, um, it's still flirting and it's, according to the teachings of Jesus, it's considered adultery to even think about a woman sexually in our mind. It's a, he said that we might as well have already done it if it's entered our heart. And that leads us to the next one. Guard against temptation. Guard yourself against temptation. And one uh, major thing that I've always practiced throughout my marriage is that I've always told myself that I would never be caught alone for any length of time with a member of the opposite sex. Um, that is just to protect <clears throat> me and, uh, from temptation and to but moreover to protect my relationship with my wife. I don't ever want to hurt her in any way and the the worst possible hurt you can give is uh adultery or uh fooling around with another woman and then finally um conceal nothing no more secrets don't keep any secrets from your spouse whatsoever Whenever you keep any secret, even if it seems innocuous, you break down that trust and you lose respect. And like I said, this goes for men and women. Uh, I'm aiming this video at men because it's the man's responsibility, but um, ultimately both parties have to be involved in this. So, there can be no secrets in a marriage um, or a relationship. So, cherish your spouse, uh, delete destructive social activities, no more flirting, guard against temptation, no more secrets. Don't conceal anything. Next step. Um, Okay, come on, computer. Final step. Redeeming the time, which literally means buying opportunities. Buying opportunities for your relationship. And what I suggest uh, to couples that um, I counsel with is that they make and share a five-year plan. And men, in your head, I know you've got a plan for where you want your family to be in the next five years, but you need to share that with your wife or your woman. You need to, uh, it, and it would really be best if you would sit down together and just make a, a general, doesn't have to be definitive, a general five-year plan where you would like to be as a family in five years from now the next thing is get out of debt a lot of the problems in relationships have to do with money um, if you're in credit card debt uh, or you know we all have to use credit uh, for the big things houses cars but other things wait for them save up and buy and always consult your spouse before you make any major purchase. And uh, I'll leave it to you what a major purchase is for, you know, depends on your income. Um, for some people, uh, $100 and $200 would be a major purchase. Um, so, but the main thing is to, to work on getting out of debt. And, you know, that takes a while, but as long as you're working on it, it just takes such a load off of the relationship. And then finally, seek gainful employment. 
nothing ruins the respect of a man more than uh, not having a decent job. Now, I understand the economy right now. I understand that jobs are hard to come by. But there's no reason to to sit on a bad job. Okay? You can uh, attend college. Um, you can go to trade school. Anything to improve your chances to seek more gainful employment. Um, men that can provide for their families have much more respect and admiration of their women than those that don't. But also remember this, don't become a workaholic uh, because your time together as, as a couple <clears throat> needs to come first. Um, your relationship with God comes first, then your relationship uh, with your spouse is immediately tied to that. So seek gainful employment. Uh, don't go overboard with, you know, the hours you spend down there and at work and, uh, you know, no workaholic nonsense, but work enough to, to make ends meet. Uh, nobody's ever going to get rich by working the average job, even if you've got a good paying job. So, uh, don't volunteer for the extra hours if it's going to interfere with reviving your failing relationship. That's mainly what I'm trying to say. All right, so there's three basic steps there for you, and we'll go over those one more time. First step, replacing lust with genuine affection and attention. Secondly, removing the obstructions that uh, give you that wonderful and joyous relationship that you should be having with your spouse. Thirdly, buy opportunities, redeeming the time, buying opportunities to build that relationship so that you weave your lives together and you two people become one flesh. And um, I will add to this that salvaging and restoring a relationship takes time. It can take time depending on it's proportional to how much trust and respect you've lost, um, whether you're the woman or the man. Um, but especially for men, however much trust and respect you've lost with your woman, it's going to take that much time to gain it back. However, taking these steps promises to be mo the most rewarding time that you will ever spend in your lifetime. There's nothing more rewarding than having that beautiful relationship that you always dreamed of when you were young. And, um, you know, that happily ever after feeling. And I am so blessed that I have that with my wife. I have that happily ever after feeling, but I know it's only because I work on the relationship according to what the Bible teaches in Ephesians chapter 5. And um, that's about it for this, this video. Uh, Jesus promises us a life more abundant, a life full of joy and peace, and, uh, if we'll only claim it. And you can claim these promises by memorizing and meditating on God's Word so that it's in your head, it becomes embedded in your heart, and it also helps the relationship if you can worship and fellowship in a local Bible-based church. If you can find a local church that, uh, you know, shop around a little, go to some different churches, find one that you like, and attend regularly. Um, it's amazing what that does for a relationship. And so I would like to formally invite you and cordially invite you, if you live in the high desert area around Barstow, California, you're welcome to attend our church at Oasis Missionary Baptist Church. And um, 
are also welcome to um, share the information that I post on Facebook. Uh, simply type Oasis Missionary Baptist search section on your Facebook page and you can get directions and information. Alright, that's it for now. We'll talk again real soon. Thanks for listening and God bless.